We will now incorporate the terrain and the tank objects to our simulation. And for that, we're going to use a very powerful technique called convex decomposition. And first of all, I'm going to take a look at the actual geometry that we will bring into the simulation as a collision. So let's go back to the object context. Actually, let me just first disconnect the grid object. So remember, we created a ground plane. We won't be using this anymore. So you can either turn this off or what I usually do is add a switch node. And this may help me later on switch between my ground plane and the terrain. So as I mentioned before, the ground plane calculates very fast. So if you will continue iterating on your simulations, you may want to keep the ground plane. But for the final simulation, for sure, I would switch for the terrain object. So let's go now to the object context and take a look at the terrain. So for now, I'm going to dive into the geometry node. And this is just, as I mentioned before, a few very standard nodes. So I'm generating a height field. And let me turn off the rest of the objects. I will hide them and turn on smooth wire shaded. So then I'm adding a noise to this height field converting it into a polygon and moving it slightly upward. Finally, I added UVs and I have this null that's outputting the geometry. So I'm going to copy the null with control C and I'm going to create a new geometry node. So something I forgot to do is reconnect the low resolution building. Let me do that real quick. So I'm going to the building geometry just to make things much faster and switch to the low resolution building. Okay, so back to the collision geometry. Let's change this name instead of GO1. Let's call it collisions or collision geo. Dive in. And I'm going to lay down an object merge node and paste the node that we copy with control V. So this is pointing to the terrain object. And I will also add another object merge for that tank. So let's go back and find the tank geometry. And again, I'm not including this in the files, but you may find something similar in the internet. So I'll zoom in, copy the output node, and go back to my collision geo, and paste it here under the object merge. Okay, so if we take a closer look at this geometry, I'll press S and 4 just to be able to select primitives and try selecting by connectivity. So I'll press 9 and change this option to 3D connectivity. You will notice that it is made of a lot of pieces. So one approach of bringing the tank into the simulation as a collision object would be just to convert the entire thing into a single convex hull. But in this case, there's a much better approach. And for that, I'm going to use a convex decomposition node. So press tab and start typing convex decomposition. Now, in order for this node to work, we would need a name attribute. So what I'm going to do is add an assemble node and only keep the create name attribute. The rest I'm going to turn off. And now connect this to the convex decomposition node. So the convex decomposition node has a few parameters, namely the max concavity. And this is probably the most important parameter. 
the lower this value is, the closer the shapes that are being created will resemble the original geometry. So if you take a look here, for example, you will have much more detail. I think in my case, I used something like 0.75. So it really depends much on your scene, but if you really need much detail, we could go much lower. So let's go with point two. Okay, another thing that we will need is to merge this with a terrain, but what I'm going to do first is also create a convex decomposition version of the terrain. So I don't need the entire terrain for this. I may just need a portion, the part that is closest to the building. So let's create a delete node. Make sure the entity is primitives and click on bounding volume, enable bounding box. And I'm going to change the size to say something like 30 meters in X, 30 meters in Z and 4 meters in Y and delete non-selected. Okay, so let's see this through the camera. So we may need a little more space here to the right. So we can press enter here on the viewports and manually change the bounding box. So let's go with this. And now I'm going to extrude this part of the terrain with a poly extrude. I'm going to try with minus one meters. This should be enough. And make sure to turn on output back. And probably we may need to reverse the geometry. Okay, so the problem that this kind of geometry would incorporate, especially if you're using a convex hull, is that if you have like very high ridges or low valleys like this ones, for example, this entire detail would flatten. So the problem with the terrain in particular is since it's one single piece, this convex decomposition node wouldn't work but we can make our own convex decomposition version with a Voronoi fracture. So just below the reverse node, let's add an ISO offset node. You could also use a VDB from polygons. To create a fog volume, so turn off distance VDB, turn on fog VDB, and then lay down a scatter node. So the amount of points that you use will depend on the amount of detail that you have in the terrain. I will go with 100 points. So we can try with this and if we do not get enough detail we can always go higher. Actually I'm going to go with 200 and then add a Voronoi fracture connect the terrain to the first input and the scattered point to the second input. So this should work fine. So finally, let's merge both geometries. And add a node. change its color to black and its name to out collision geo and this is what I'm going to bring into the simulation so now let's go back to our top network And here, instead of the ground plane, we're going to add 
a static object. We will connect it here under the switch. Of course, we would change the input to number one. And now to bring in this geometry, we will find under the sub path this collision geometry. So select the out collision geo. So now we have our tank and our terrain geometry. Let's just change the name of this node to collision geo. And before we start simulating, let me turn on the display for the building. So I will turn off the guide geometry and turn on display geometry. And for my collision geometry, I will turn off the display geometry and turn on the bullet data guide geometry. And here you will notice something strange. Everything has been converted to one single convex hull. And this is not what we're looking for. Actually, this is why we created our convex decomposition. So one very important parameter that you need to be aware of is this create convex hull per set of connected primitives. Make sure this option is on and now we will have all our pieces that we created and this will yield much more precise collisions. So let's go back to our camera view and real quick let's create a flipbook just to see how everything is coming up. And this is looking very promising. The only thing that I want to do before we finish this video is increase a little bit the size of the terrain towards the camera and just check the physical properties of this collision geometry just to fine tune the interaction between the concrete pieces and the terrain. So first of all, let's go back to our collision geometry. Look for our terrain, the delete node. And I will extend a little bit this part. So for a moment, I will turn off the update. Increase the size of the terrain. And update again. Okay, so now this should be enough. Let's go back to our simulation. And I just want to check the bounciness and the friction here under our static object. So select your collision geo, go to the physical parameters. I will bring down the bounce to say 0.2 or actually 0.1 and the friction is fine. So let's go with this and move to the final section of our exercise. 